Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to D News Plus today. I am Trace, and this is our first episode in a series of three on puberty. Puberty happens to everybody. And so we wanted to know, what is it all about? Make sure you subscribe so you get all the episodes in this series. You can check us out over on SoundCloud and iTunes if you just want to hear, you don't want to see my weird puberty face. And what we're going to learn this week is how puberty comes about exactly. Like, why aren't we born ready to reproduce? Do animals go through puberty? What things affect the onset of puberty? What is this puberty thing exactly? And even if we can reverse the effects of puberty. Super cool. But first, let's talk about the evolution of puberty. Aging is a part of life. You know, everything ages. Not everything dies because of age. That's a whole other story. But everything does age. We've talked about it and tried to figure out how to reverse it and tried to understand why it happens pretty much as long as there's been humans. And we've learned a lot about aging over the years. And aging is basically changes that your body goes through as it gets older, as it's been around on this planet for long periods of time. Some of the biggest changes, however, the most rapid changes come during puberty. But why does puberty happen at the time it does? Why aren't you just popped out of your mom ready to start, you know, making your own babies? The length of the life of an organism is a term we've all heard, you know, lifespan. The human lifespan has been increasing exponentially, more or less. According to the National Center for Health Statistics, life expectancy for a man in the United States in 1907 was only about 45 and a half years. By 1957, it had gone up to 66 and a half, thereabouts. And in 2007, it's gone up to 75 and a half. Studies have shown, though, that we aren't actually living that much longer. It's just that infant mortality rates have plummeted, and that's a large factor in these statistics. So the numbers were skewed before, and now that our babies aren't dying, we are living longer. We often confuse maximum human lifespan with life expectancy, and those are not the same thing. Two people born at the same time are going to have a different experience, right? One could pass away as an infant, the other could live to be 70, so the life expectancy would only be 35 if you only had that data set. But that doesn't mean the majority of people living in that area are only going to live to 35. Infant mortality skews this data. So how long are humans supposed to live? What's the maximum human lifespan, the average human lifespan? Well, from an evolutionary point of view, only long enough for us to pop out another baby. That's really all that evolution cares about, right? So if that's the case, why is it that our reproductive systems don't develop sooner? Why can't we pop out kids sooner, right? A lot of, a lot of animals and a lot of plants and a lot of bacteria and things, you know, they can reproduce right away. They don't need to wait. And that comes down to our cells. During the cellular reproductive process called mitosis, chromosomes with genetic material are reproduced in the nucleus. Once the chromosome is doubled, those are sent to two daughter cells. You know, you get one cell and then you get two. The dividing cell then gets a complete chromosome before it separates. Preceding this process, it, the mother cell usually doubles in size and then splits. It's a cycle, mitosis. So that's the process. It's basic biology, mitosis. But we only grow or gestate for a certain amount of time, and we're really needy when we're born, right? Babies don't really do that much on their own. And there are a few theories to why this is. Here are two of them. One long-held theory was the obstetrical dilemma. Basically, our brains don't fully develop inside of the mother's body because we have narrow pelvises, and the birth canal goes right through the pelvis. So if we had a fully developed brain, it wouldn't make it out the birthing canal. It would get stuck in there, and that would kill the infant and the mom. Not exactly an evolutionary advantage. So that's one theory. We have to develop more later. More research was done by an anthropologist at the University of Rhode Island named Holly Dunsworth. We're going to call this the metabolic theory because, you know, it doesn't really have a name that we could find. And she says, quote, there is not a unique pelvic constraint on gestation length and baby size, but there is a certain capacity that a mother has metabolically. And once that capacity is reached, the baby is born. Basically, she found that when you account for body size, it's more about the mother's metabolism and how much she can give to the infant. More or less, a woman can't sustain a pregnancy for more than about nine and a half months. And that's because the max metabolic rate that humans can sustain is between two and two and a half times on average. So after a little while, the mom has to have the baby. It's going to become more dangerous for her. So with that in mind, if we're developing outside of the body afterward, 
then it would make sense that at some point in that development, we would need to kick into the puberty system, right? We need to learn how to or start developing how to become a sexual being as opposed to just a developing being. By the way, human gestation isn't that much shorter than our closest relatives. Oranitans, it's a little shorter. Uh, chimps and gorillas, ours is a little longer. But most animals are fully mature, at least in size, not too long after embryonic development. We take a lot longer. At birth, we have developed our sex organs, but they're not functioning yet. They haven't been switched on. Our sex organs grow all the way until puberty. They are still in development. But humans aren't the only animals that go through puberty. In fact, according to a wildlife information specialist at Michigan State University named Jim Harding, all animals go through puberty. I mean, not the same way that we do. You know, they don't get angry and throw things and yell at their parents and rebel and stuff. But they do transition to sexual maturity over time. He said, quote, if you look at it that way, as in they're transitioning to sexual maturity, you could say that all animals go through a kind of puberty too. Monkeys and chimpanzees and gorillas all have similar biological changes to humans, and the females have monthly menstrual cycles. The males become larger and more muscular and more in charger. And other primates' butts change to bright red to show fertility. I'm kind of glad that we don't do that. That'd be kind of weird. Turtles don't become sexually mature until they reach a certain size. Some species of turtles look exactly like female turtles until they reach that size, and then they get thicker tails and their shells change color. It's super crazy. And the clearest sign of reaching sexual maturity for a lot of animals is a rise in aggression, which we go through as well, as I was just joking about. You know, you fight with your parents, and you fight with your friends, and you fight with everybody. Everybody's fighting all the time. I read Harry Potter book five, so did you. He got really angry and it was just not my favorite. Anyway, no surprise there. So once puberty starts, man oh man do things change. And that's what we're going to talk about tomorrow here on D News Plus. It's going to be super cool. And we're just scratching the surface of this topic, you guys. So make sure you subscribe so you get the next couple of episodes. And if you want to learn some other really, really cool stuff, check out The Great Courses Plus. They sponsored this episode, so we want to thank them for that. The Great Courses Plus gives you on-demand access to a huge library of really, really awesome video courses presented by experts in their fields. You can check out Experiencing the Hubble, Understanding the Greatest Images of the Universe. It's really, 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 really cool. I can't say really enough. If you want unlimited access to all of The Great Courses Plus lectures, you can help us out by signing up to start your free month today. It helps the show and you get to learn a whole bunch of other cool stuff. Go to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash dnewsplus. Remember, that's thegreatcoursesplus.com slash dnewsplus. There's a link in the description. So puberty is an awkward time for us all. Uh, did you have any voice cracking that caused an embarrassing situation for you? I was just gangly. I was so gangly, and I had a really high voice. My voice didn't deepen. I mean, I don't have a super deep voice now, but my voice didn't deepen until I was like 13, I think, which was awkward to be on the bus, and everybody was like, hey, man, what's up? And I'm like, how's it going? Not awesome. Anyway, let us know your puberty stories down in the comments. Make sure you subscribe so you get tomorrow's episode of D News Plus. I'm Trace. We'll see you then.